Okay, real quick, so this is the Carlisle um, Overload Protector Full Load 55 Amps Line Road Amps 153A. Um, first cycle trip 140 amps. Uh, the part number is right there. You can see that the um, HN69GZ306. Okay, this is what it looks like. We're going to put it in today. I'll show you how to diagnose that it's bad. Uh, yeah, that's how we're doing. We're going to go online, type in service guide for you know 060 Carl compressors or whatever. Just type that in there, download its document. Okay, and we're going to go down to the table of contents and we can see if we look through here, we can see. Right down there, uh, 3.2997 electrical accessories. So we're dealing with a overload pack. So let's see if that has anything about overloads in electro electronical accessories. Look closer there on page 117. You can see that has this overcurrent protection. Uh, I'd recommend reading about them. Um, seriously, you got to do this. Good technicians do this. Okay, now look right here. See, you have a replacement number based off of your. Uh, compressor number if you find this issue. Um, I would also recommend calling up Car Isle or um, going to United Refrigeration and just having their um, purchaser do it as well but like as a double check verification of what you've already done if you know this much it'll help them. So we're going to keep scrolling down and we're going to find um, that they're going to have some wiring diagrams. So right here we're dealing with a three phase system so we can see that this is how it's wired in. You have L1, L2, L3 and you can see um, here's the you know this is where um, the compressor uh, maybe terminal head or whatever that is. It's in, this is inside the fuel. This is inside the terminal box. You can see that you have one leg of the control voltage going to one there, right? And you can see that little line goes off right here, control circuit, and then the other leg, you know, goes on this number two right there. And you can see line one goes to number three, line two goes to number three, and line one go to number three right there. And then four just goes to the actual hookup to your compressor right there. Um, so yeah, so we're going to just, you know, kind of take a look at that. Now we're going to marry this. Now this is not gospel truth, okay? This is, you know, well, I guess it is kind of gospel truth because it's the manufacturers, but we're going to marry this, but what, what we see in the actual machine room and, uh, you know, we're going to take a look at that and then we're going to go, okay, um, and we're going to make it work based off of what's actually there and on what the manufacturer says to do. So that's what we're going to do. Real quick, just want to show you. Uh, you can see three, two, one, and then there's a four somewhere. But yeah, so one, two, three, and this one's four. That's how you know. Just to show you quick, this overload relay has continuity. This is a brand new one, right? Across three to four. No continuity to one, obviously, no continuity to two. Now one and two. We'll have continuity to each other they're connected you see so that is what a properly uh, functioning relay will look like and this relay seems like it will obviously trip when it has an overcurrent to the system so we're going to replace the other ones and we'll see how the other ones compare um yeah okay so we're going to replace this um the overloads inside this terminal box on this kyle 60 compressor i'll show you how to do it and how you know it's bad so the first warning sign is here in the in the cabinet. So you see there's the contactor to it. You see how I have continuity between one and two. That's good. I have an open line between one and three. That's not good. I have an open line between two and three. Now I'm taking ohms right now um, to show you. So those are not connected somehow. So that is a warning sign right there. So I have continuity with one, but not with the others. So now we're going to open up that uh, terminal, that uh, electrical box. We're going to take a look at it. So I just want to tell you, uh, so what I personally saw was it would actually pull this in and out, 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 this um, uh, contactor, and that it would try over and over again to run the compressor, and it would draw an absurd amount of amps on one leg because there's only two overloads. There should be three, one for each phase, but there's only two in this terminal box. So it was overloading on that one thing, and it would go off on oil, or it would, it would trip on something. And um, so... But that seems to be caused because those two overloads were not sending voltage to it. And you'll see what I mean when I get down there. But so that was kind of a sign was this contact that was working, but the compressor wasn't turning on. So as you can see, those are the overloads right in there. They just unscrew out of there. And they go together. And you can see right here, this is the wire that goes all the way up to that contactor. And here's the other one that goes all the way up to that contact. And you see they they, they land on the top right there. Now I already checked for voltage, so I'm gonna unscrew this and take a look. Actually, really quick, 
You also want to take continuity on the on the actual compressor. You see the you know the terminal block on the compressor right there. You want to take continuity. It's, it's really hard to do with, with one person, but you can see that that has continuity. If you go from so similar up there, we went to pin one to pin two, pin two to pin three, pin two to pin three to pin one, right? So we, you, you made sure they all had continuity to each other. If you do that on the compressor pins and you find that they're okay and they do not short out the ground, then you know that the, the compressor itself at least seems like it's all right. And now I can start to suspect that relay pack. So we can see from this wiring diagram that we want to check continuity between this one, this one, and this one right there. Because you can see that those are the ones that are getting the line power um, from, you know, line one, line two, line three. That's where they're connecting to. So those are the compressor windings. So we're going to take a quick look at those ones and see how they're doing. One and two have two. One and three got two. Two and three has two. So they all have continuity. You can see I'm holding the ground. I'm connected to that one down in there. And then I am uh, connected to that copper pipe. I'll turn on the lights on if you can see it. Holding out the ground right there. You see? Open line. That's what we want in all three of them. So it actually looks like those bolts right there will lift the whole assembly out, which is what I want. And if you look down there, that's actually you can see the serial number information. Just thought you would know when you look up stuff. By the way, if you can't find a way to get your control voltage out of there, make sure that you're shut off at the breaker there and you're shut off at the breaker over there. So you can see that across the control voltage for the for the overloads are good to go. And that's why you're still able to get your contactor to pull in. You can kind of see that, yeah, that, that control voltage seems all right. You can see across the line voltage, got an open line, right? We actually only have them on one of the relays, so only on this relay right there. We're still gonna replace both of them though. So what happened? Is this is this compressor junk and caused the relay to trip? It could be, but it just looks like you look brand new compressor, old terminal box. They just unbolted the terminal box, bolted the new one on. Those relays are probably 30 years old. Let's replace them and see if that fixes it. So all you're going to do is you're just going to legitimately do a line for line swap. So you can see how that still has three, that one's four, uh, this one I believe is one, this one's two, right? And you're just going to do a line for line swap on the relay, the relay that we have. Alright, so you can see that those are all hooked up, popped apart. I had to replace some of the terminal connectors because these ones are newer and it's different. Uh, so those are replaced, popped for pot and uh, well, line for line, wire for wire. And now I'm going to put it back on that metal pad right there. And uh, so just to explain a little quick, super quick how this works, and I'll pull up the wiring diagram just to, you know, show you. But basically you got some control voltage that'll come in through this line. It's going to actually hit, hard to see, I'll try to turn on the light and stuff. There we go. That's going to hit right there. And then on this next little uh, terminal block right here, it comes out. So you can see one comes in from down there, it hits. And then this red one comes out, hits the terminal, hits this overload relay, goes over to this, goes over to there, goes into this orange one, and that orange one goes back up here, right, to where the control voltage comes from. So what happens is if this gets an overload of current, right, in the properly working relay, this is, it's almost, you can almost imagine these as glorified fuses. It will cut um, the control voltage and the line voltage to the compressor and then the control voltage to the contactor. So if these are working properly, when it draws an overcurrent, these will both fail. And then as far as I know, I believe these are one use, Sometimes they have an automatic reset. These ones, they didn't come with directions or instructions or anything. So I'm pretty sure these are one use that if this is good overloaded, they're done. They're, you, you'll never get control voltage to that, um, to that contactor and you'll never get line voltage to this compressor. From my understanding, that's how these puppies work. So we're gonna put it back together and test it again and start it up, see if it works.
because it's very possible because you see how there's only two overloads there's one line that goes on this thing so it is possible that this compressor could be burned out from all the attempts but I don't think that that's the case because it, it ohmed out just fine it didn't and it didn't short the ground so let's give it a shot see what happens back in the service manual you can see right here this little dotted line right there that's the control wiring right there oh it's actually down here control circuit you see that little dotted line right here I'll, I'll draw a line on it right oh, goodness gracious right there comes up here goes through there right and that control voltage goes to number two number one right and then that just continues through through, 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 all the way back up to your contactor or whatever activates it. So I just had to kind of throw in some self-tappers and connect it a little bit better because it wasn't doing good and I don't want any of that steel to touch the terminal box, short everything out, and then we're back here again. So I just reconnected it, thought it was just worth mentioning. Just shoot a quick one to show you. So, see between uh, three and four, open line. So you can see that's why we we're getting that weird, um, you know, only like one phase of power was going to the compressor and you can see for this one um, it actually is across so we're still getting the control voltage and I just wanted to show that more in detail on this overload so only one of them was bad I replaced them both and now I'm gonna go check some other things continuity between one and three continuity between one and two continuity between two and three so now this is good to go we're gonna open it up, start it up, take some amp draws and make sure it's all right. Okay, before we can find how much voltage this compressor should be taking, we need to take, see what voltage it's getting. It's getting 480, so now we're gonna look that up in the manual to see what we should be getting. In the menu, so I just wanted to show you, it gives you this like, you know, um, table of what is, you know, the, in the serial number of it. So all that really matters is you can see this first one, compressor type. So that matters, that, that needs to match because you're gonna have some variance on what it is. So that needs to match, and this needs to match right there, right? Those two need to match. Now if we go down to that next value, that zero, that is compressor identification. Can you do a compressor, old compressor? That doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter for the voltage. D, what is D suction valve location? That doesn't matter. A, A, electronic variable. So. This one won't actually matter because look at what it's talking about. Internal, external overloads, um, overcurrent detection, okay, whether or not it has those kind of things, that doesn't affect how much amps it's going to draw. And right here, um, this, this value up there, the 36, electrical characteristics, so that matters, okay, because uh, that's gonna be the voltage you're going to draw. Oil and refrigerant, model and package, suction on, suction on. So these other two values don't matter either. And the reason why I brought that up is I'll show you. So you can see down here, now we're at our, we're at our table. And I wish I could show you the table better, but it's on the table on page 103 where it has the electrical data. And if you can see that in the index. Now if we come down here, we can see that this right here is almost exactly what we have except this zero is not a zero on Oz, that's like an A on Oz. And then um, I believe this A right here is um, it's like a C. But as we discussed earlier, it, that doesn't matter at all. So we're gonna come down to um, this one right here, on this one, and then we look at our last digits on our, um, zero on our model number, we have this right there. So now we're gonna go over to um, here we're going to see lock loader amps is um, 20 so no not 20 17.8 so this thing should be getting 17.8 amps um, so we're going to take an amp draw and see what we get alrighty so we're going to take an amp draw see we got 9 right and we got 9 we got 9 is that good so that's good because remember it's full load amps is what we looked up. So if this thing was fully loaded, as high as it could go, it would be getting um, like 17, 18 amps. That's as high as we should let this thing go. If it's drawing more amps than that, then we're overloading um, what it's supposed to do. But that's, so that's supposed to be like the maximum conditions. This working as hard as it can. 
that's what it's supposed to get. So now let's compare it to the unit next to it because of the same model, same low temp, same everything, and you see that that's good to go right there. So I would say, yep, we, um, you know, they're about the same, nine. So yep, they're good to go. So I would say we successfully replaced those overloads. We made sure that that compressor wasn't um, single phasing or didn't, didn't have anything burned up. Now just real quick, you can also, is it getting hot? Yep, that's hot. How does this feel? Well, that feels good too. Filled up with oil. And now you can touch the suction bell. Make sure that the suction side is doing okay. And you could even throw your gauges on it if you wanted on the suction side to make sure that it was doing it. Yeah, this is getting cold. How does it compare? So I would say this compressor is good to go. That's how you do it. Please like and subscribe. Helps me out. All right. That's how you do it.